see we do have some more people showing up. Excellent. Let me just share out my desktop here. Okie dokie. All right. Um, well, my name is Alex McGeorge. Uh, I'm an engineer here at Immunity. And today we are going to be taking a look at two, uh, two exploits and one module. The exploit we're going to, two exploits we're going to be taking a look at today. First, for the, and I can never pronounce this right, so I'm just going to spell it, the uh, NGINX web server exploit, um, written by our in-house uh, exploit impresario, uh, Ronald. And we're also going to be taking a look at the PTY module for use on Unix nodes, or excuse me, uh, Linux nodes in this instance. And we're also going to be demoing our version of the just now released uh, MS10048, uh, which dropped as part of Microsoft Patch Tuesday today and is available to our CEU customers. Uh, but we'll be taking a look at that last. But all right, so uh, for NGINX, what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of give you an idea of how I've got things hooked up here. I've got a NGINX web server here. And basically, um, what we're going to do is we're going to drop down to favorites, and just like any other remote exploit, we're going to go ahead and let uh, accept the default and let Canvas work this out for us. Now what I will do first is open up Canvas log, and let me pull up the terminal that we want here. Excellent. All right, because this uh, exploit does have a lot of stuff that flies by pretty quick. But all right, so uh, we've got, so this was a cool bug that was in uh, a pretty large subsection um, of this particular web server. Um, really, all the major branches were affected, and you, know, you can still download vulnerable versions of this web server uh, from their site today. Now, it has since been patched, um, but it's you know, still out there in the wild. One of the other nice things about this exploit is we have the ability to evade exec shield. Just, okay. And that's going to come in handy because on this particular uh, VM that I've got this installed on, we are running it. Uh, this VM is CentOS. So we do have uh, some exec shield and such to contend with there. But we're just going to click on OK and let Canvas do its thing. Now, one of the things uh, that we do talk about in our uh, ethical hacking course, if Ronald is teaching it, we do, um, and you can see here in the background, my node is starting up. But if Ronald is part of the teaching staff for that, he does talk about uh, all the mechanics that went into writing this exploit, including creating a hash collision, and more about the Linux heap than probably anyone has ever wanted to know um, outside of the kernel.org mailing list. But here we go. And now we've got a shell uh, from a overflow and a web service, which is really kind of surprising. You don't see these much anymore. Now, I will mention in my email, I did misspeak. Uh, by default, uh, NGINX runs as nobody. So, for example, if I do my Canvas shell here and I just pipe nobody over, we'll see I'm still, in fact, running as nobody. But be that as it may, it's still pretty cool. I do have a shell. Um, and one of the things that we're going to take a look at today to help us with the shell is going to be our PTY module. Now, the pseudo terminal module is pretty cool. Um, essentially, one of the limitations of Canvas, the way we used to do this, um, and the way that I usually go through it in most of my demos, is we would navigate through the command line interface here. And this is great, you know, what we would do just to run people through it real quick is we'd ask Canvas what nodes are connected to it, interact with that node, and then we would shell shock from here and have access to the Linux command line. Um, this is pretty good if you just want to do real simple things, um, like let's say you want to just cat a file or you want to append something to a file uh, or you want to, you know, download, use curl to download something. You know, that's fairly that's fairly simple. It's fairly readil, uh, readily available here in Canvas. But on occasion, you really do need like a fully functional editor, which does require a pseudo terminal. So what we're going to do is I've got this selected. I'm just going to double click on the PTY shell. 
and we're going to let Canvas do its thing. There we go. Now, a couple things to note. So obviously, we're still operating within my Canvas session here. And we've got the title of our window is the IP address, and then our effective user credentials. So but from here, I can do, say, all right, I am nobody. So what I might want to do, just from here, now I am the web user, but what I could do, just to kind of give you an idea, then I can say, You can see I did use command uh, tab completion there, and it worked. And there you go. So from here, you know, I can do a couple of things. Like, for example, let's say I want to interact. Uh, let me just expand this all, uh, all the way. Let's say I wanted to interact, for example, with uh, the NGINX web config files. So what I could do is just say uh, vim. Here you go. It's actually taking the dimensions from my original window, but that's not too much of an issue. You can see from here. All right, so I can interact with this config file, and obviously I can uh, I can I can do a lot more with it uh, given this view of it, uh, specifically given the uh, given them access and such. So it just kind of makes things a little bit nicer um, and a little bit easier to deal with. So when I'm done put out, and there I am. And when I'm finally finished with this session, all I have to do is I exit, and now I'm back to Canvas. And this node will still be active. So just for an example, I can pipe this command over, and I can get results. So I do know that this node is still active. I can check my current working directory. All the stuff we kind of tell you in Canvas 101, you're able to do. All right, so the next piece is interesting. So we're going to take a look at our exploit for MS-10048, uh, which is a local for Windows XP SP3. And to do this, we do have what's released into the Canvas early updates now is a functional exploit. However, it needs tighter integration with Canvas. You're going to see what I mean. So what I'm going to do here is give you a real quick demo of me getting a system level shell using this exploit. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my VM console. Okay, excellent. Let me just bring this up. Alrighty. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a copy of the MS10048 binary. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to execute that from cmd.exe, and we're going to see that will spawn a second cmd.exe process running as system. Okay. Let me just make this screen a bit bigger here. Okay, all I'm going to do is just let it go. And we can see this is also, I should say, mention, uh, mention, this is also written by Ronald here at Immunity, and he also contributed a lot to the PTY shell module. Uh, and we can see we do like to keep it real at Immunity, so we included a little bit of Japanese poetry in the executable output. But if I go to Task Manager, so this, if we just look through this dialog, we can see, all right, spawning a shell, it was successful. The exploit says it succeeded. And now we're, but we're still within a shell. We retain our same visual context. What I can do here is go to Task Manager. And if I look at the cmd.exe uh, processes that are available, I can see non-admin, which is the user I'm running as, has one started. And then now I also have cmd.exe running as system which has taken over this particular cmd.exe window. So that is kind of, uh, that's what's released to Canvas, and Canvas Early Updates right now. 
Um, this is fairly really good exploit, actually. Uh, and we recommend that if you're going to be trying this out in the wild, reboot between attempts um, because we still have some work to do getting this exploit to clean up after itself. And obviously, uh, eventually you will be able to run this directly from Canvas and we'll take care of the uploading, the executing, and handling the new shell for you. But here we can see that we do have a very solid uh, piece of exploit code. So that should be that. All right, so let me pop back in here. So a little bit of a surprise today uh, with what we covered. So I'm going to go ahead and ask, uh, does anyone have any questions that I can field at this juncture? Um, just to head off the inevitable, no, we haven't tested this against antiviruses as yet. Uh, that's probably exactly what I'm going to be doing right after this demo. Uh, we'll see how that works. But do we have any other questions that I can field? Nope. Okay, well, a uh, short demo this week, but some useful toys, some fun things to play with, uh, and I hope everyone found it informational. Uh, as part of our, if you're not a CEU uh, member at this point, uh, we should be releasing this into the general Canvas tree in the September release. Uh, that is usually the current plan. If that changes, there'll be a note on the Canvas list uh, from probably Dave. All right, well, thank you all very much for your attention, and have a good day.